Welcome to Richard Sanding's Perfect Movie Live Podcast Show! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome! What a week it's been, what a week! Uh, Shane Black is making another Predator film, and I, for one, am very much looking forward to a Predator film set at Christmas. (laughs) Shane Black loves Christmas. The only people who filmed more projects at Christmas are homeless charities. North Korea has said that James Franco and Seth Rogen's latest film is an act of war, which seems a bit excessive. Unless they mean a war of attrition, then there's every chance they are correct. (laughs) Speaking of Seth Rogen alumni, did you know that Goon, How to Train Your Dragon, and This is the End all passed the Baruchel test? (laughs) A VHS copy of Hellraiser keeps being found on top of a bus stop in Elephant and Castle, although really it should be found on a bus stop in North London. Angel to some, Islington to others. (laughs) The World Cup continues in Brazil. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never seen a Brazilian film that didn't make Brazil look like the most terrifying place on earth. Only in Brazil could they make a film about a state-sanctioned death squad with kill-on-site orders and make them the nice guys. (laughs) I don't want to say life in Brazil is bleak, but Cormac McCarthy is writing a book about it. (laughs) Brazilian crime lords go on holiday to Rwanda to get away from it all. (laughs) If you look up Brazil on TripAdvisor, every entry is just screaming. And finally, Stephen Moffat walks into a bar. The internet is furious! I can't believe he'd do that! (laughs) And so concludes the jokes, inverted comma, (laughs) roundup of the week. Uh, I'm self-unemployed, which means I get to go to the cinema during the day, which is the best thing ever. Often what I like to do to make sure I'm the only person in there if I can possibly help it, is I go on the last Thursday of a film's release the earliest screening possible so that everyone who would possibly want to see it has definitely seen it and is probably at work. Uh, I went to see the Lego movie and I was the only person in the cinema to watch the Lego movie and uh, everything was awesome uh, because it was just me. I went to see the film Predators at the cinema and I'm not sure if you've seen Predators but it's basically uh, a remake that's also a reboot that's also technically the third one. It's very confusing where it fits into the sort of canon of Predator it's basically watching a tribute band do Predator because you spend the whole time going, which is definitely Predator, but it's not Predator. It's not Predator. But I got to go to the cinema early. It was one of those massive screens you get in London. It's about 400 seats. And I got there early, middle of the back row. Middle of the back row. That's the dream. Middle of the back row. Brilliant. I'm there early. That's my treat. There's about 20 people in there. The film's about to start and this bloke comes in and sits right next to me. Like, right next to me. Not in a creepy 1950s hand-on-the-knee type way. Just more sort of low-level autistic. Doesn't realise that's inappropriate. And ordinarily, I'd be too English and angry and not sure what to do about this. I'd spend the whole time staring at the floor, just furious. Just like, oh, I'm going to blog about this. You, Oh, the hashtags I am coming up with for you. I have no... Oh, God, you don't know what I'm going to do. But I try something. I try something, and I wholeheartedly recommend you give this a go if this ever happens to you in the cinema. Just turn to the person next to you. Uh, just turn to him and go, uh, Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck off! <laughs> They always move. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you try it every time you go to the cinema or if seating's been allocated, but uh, that is a pretty awesome way to have almost entirely, like, the whole row to yourself. (laughs) Sophie Hagen! Okay, so I'm from Denmark, and in Denmark, one of the first films uh, I saw was a Danish film called Nedervakten, which means Night Watch. Uh, and it's from 1994, and it features the three actors we have in Denmark. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, Nikolai Kosteveldau, who you might know from Game of Thrones. He plays Jamie Lannister. Yeah? Uh, do you watch it? Yeah? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Hardest guy on earth. Right? He is so- and the beginning of this film is uh, his penis. Like naked. I was eight years old and I went to the library and I, I let's say borrowed the, <laughs> the film and I went home and I, wa- and it's the first thing you saw was his penis. So he, his penis was the first penis I ever saw. Right? Uh, which is, it, it's, it sets the bar quite high for the, <laughs> for all other penises I was to see for the rest of my life, right? It's a, it's a good penis. If you've seen Game of Thrones, you probably, no, they don't show penises, do they? Ah, oh, it's a shame. You're missing out. What's the, it's such a, even as an eight year old, I was like, I bet that's a good one. Uh, and 
<laughs> Night. Well, I know it was remade in I think an American or British film. I don't know, but it was remade. But in the Danish version, it's about this guy. It's about Nikolai Kastaveldau, who uh, becomes uh, a night watch at a uh, place for dead people. What's the word? Morg. Morg. <laughs> dead people place. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he has a, a kind of a stupid, semi-retarded friend called Jens, who's played by Kim Butnia. Who, if you, have you seen the bridge? He's the the Danish cop. So he's, uh, you know, like not as good looking as Nikolai. He played like the stupid friend who slept with hookers and did stupid pranks. And then there was uh, Sophie Grobbel, who's the lead in um, The Killing. Yeah. So those are the three actors we have, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great movie, and I love that movie. Uh, about... Two years ago in Denmark, uh, I was, I was gonna do a show for, uh, a, a kind of big TV thing. And they wanted me to pre-record, uh, like a sketch, which was a parody of, I think you call the show Come Dine With Me. Yeah. It's the one where like a celebrity invites people in and, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the, the person who was the host of the show is called, uh, Nikolai Lee Kurs. He was gonna, he's the fourth actor we have. Uh, and, uh, so he was going to play the celebrity who invited me and two other open, uh, like new comedians into his house. And the whole joke of the sketch was that uh, he was trying to impress us because he's huge in Denmark, but we were meant to pretend to not care. That was the whole thing. And at some point during this TV show, he was meant to invite in uh, a famous friend to impress us. And they sent me the script and the famous friend was Nikolai Costaveldo, you know, great penis guy. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna, we're going to do a scene with Nikolai Costaveldo. And I was so excited. And uh, so we went to do the, the filming and it was quite hard having to pretend to be unimpressed by, by Nikolai, <laughs> Nikolai Lee Kurs because he was brilliant. Uh, and then we reached the scene where he has to introduce his famous friend. And he goes, uh, oh yeah, my friend just came by. Uh, this is Kim Botnia, you know, the retarded friend from that movie. And they were like, oh yeah, uh, Nikolai Casavella couldn't make it. <laughs> so we got the retarded friend, who is now, when it's not 1994, still kind of retarded. And like, like th just like old, 47, I think I found out he was. 47, oh, are you, are you all, you're not, did I offend anyone? <laughs> Old compared, well, I, I mean, Nikolai Casavella could have been 47, but you wouldn't care. So <laughs> this like old guy walks in and I was like, oh, I mean, I, I love Kim Bat I love his movies. And he walks in and I was like, oh, f oh damn it. Oh. And we get into the scene and we have to improvise everything because they think that we can. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so the scene is, uh, they just told us in this scene, you have to be really impressed by everything Kim Butney says. I'm a big fan of his, so that was easy. I couldn't remember any of the films he'd ever been in because <laughs> mine went blank. So uh, when the, the, we were three new comedians, it was me, uh, Tina and Annas. So Tina was m listing all the films he'd done. Like, that was a good film. That was a good film. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> They were. <laughs> no idea. Uh, so at some point, this guy is a professional. And you know that because of what he did. Uh, so he uh, improvised this scene by saying, yeah? He went to Tina. And he was like, yeah? So you like that, you like that film, do you? Hmm. And he leaned in to like, get a kiss. What a brilliant like 47-year-old man, right? Just like, oh, well, the cameras are rolling. How are you not going to kiss me? Now, Tina is... Um, this, this may go out, so I'm not going to... I want to say... I, I want to use the word prude, but I think she just has, like, self-respect. <laughs> She's like... I'll describe her as, like, a Sandy from Greece before she became a slut. Right? Where I sexually am a bit more like Sandy the hurricane. Um, so she... So she, like, just, like... What do you call that? Like, pouts... And gives him like a little little peck on his lips, and I was a bit because we were all going to do this show together, me and the two other people, the two other comedians, and I I get a bit competitive. <laughs> so I was like, oh, how dare she? Like she, he was leaning in for a real kiss. That's not okay. Uh, so I was ready, and uh, he he understands that she doesn't want to make out with him. He gets a bit ugh, annoyed, and he turns to Anna's the guy, and kind of as a joke leans in for a kiss. Anna's is all in. <laughs> Which fucks Kim up. So Kim was like, ha, 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 just kidding. And then he looks at me and we, we lock eyes and I let him know with my eyes that I'm in. 
I'm like, I saw what Tina did. I'm better. I can do, I can do this full on. <clears throat> And I remember it, it, it's, it's very, like, when I remember it, it's like a, it's like a very slow flashback. And I remember thinking, I don't just like him from a movie. I, there's something about him that I, and I couldn't quite figure out. And I, I wasn't, I didn't have the time or energy to think of it because I was about to make out with this guy. So we locked eyes and we, we, <laughs> Like in a movie, we, we, we just swept the table from all the stuff that was on the table. I crawled up and so did he. We're both quite fat, right? <laughs> the two fat, like I was 23, he was 47. We crawled up on the table towards each other and started making out. Like full on. I was licking his beard. Full on. Like, and I'd never really done a filming of anything before. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that it take like they don't just go and when they do a movie kiss it's not just Mwah, cut done they let they keep, let it just keep going and going I think it was two minutes of me making out with this guy on top of a table in front of <laughs> Nikolai Likos and Tina the prude <laughs> and Anna's who was a bit jealous I was making out with this guy and as I was making out with him I realized what it was I liked about him so I was like, yeah, I do like him from, from all his films, even the ones that not a lot of people know about. I was like, oh, he also looks a tiny bit like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my, my movie experience uh, with famous Danish people. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so now it's time uh, to bring out our special headline act. So will you please uh, welcome uh, Casting Call Woe! Hello. 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 Welcome. Thank um, you. So, uh, just for the benefit of people who uh, don't know who you are, yep. uh, could you explain <laughs> who you are and what you do? Um, I'm technically casting Kowo. Um That's not the name my parents gave me, thankfully. Um, but I do an anonymous blog and Twitter account and Tumblr and all the other crap that you get online um and i talk about terrible casting calls in the acting world um and tweet about them and put them out there so what specifically is it about the casting calls that you sort of trying to highlight that's, that's sort of the problem with them or uh... um it it started off with the ridiculousness like how stupid it was to sort of show what it is to be an actor more, more like the silly things you end up having to do um, but as I started doing the more, it's highlighting the sexism that's in the industry and the ageism and the racism and the misogyny <laughs> and the disabilism <laughs> and just what a horrible industry it generally is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be incredibly mistreated for no money. Yes, no usually, money as well. Yeah. Yes. Never pay, never Don't, pay. No. I should no, like to make it so clear cool. that just to make sure you don't feel uncomfortable, I'm also not paying you to be here doing <laughs> yeah. this. So I should make that abundantly clear. Makes right? very yeah. at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they are incredible, though, some of them. I mean, there's some uh, some incredible stuff. Have you got a few like, examples of some of them, maybe, that you could give? Um, yeah, uh, it's stupid. I haven't actually written any down, but uh, I, have sure a lot, I have a lot in my head, which is because so they're example, sort of really. my life. Um, well, sort of, um, an idea of sort of the, the, the stupid one, so just that, oh, my God, why do I do this job, is sort of things like, uh, please note the frog does not need contemporary dance skills. Um, <laughs> um, and then it sort of goes into the sort of horrible sexist or just, oh God. Um, so uh, must be willing to have a condom filled with condensed milk thrown at her face. <laughs> um, what is, uh, um, she takes part in a light-hearted orgy scene and then gets kicked through a window. Um, <laughs> she... <laughs> Well, I think there's another one where like, she gets uh, wrapped in cling film, is coated in gravy and then killed or something ridiculous. I'm looking for someone to pretend to be my mum when me and my mum can't meet up. <laughs> <laughs> which, is just, which just shows what people think actors yeah, yeah. do as well. But also this isn't like someone's Facebook update kind of going, is anyone up for it? These are like on casting websites on, for actors yeah, to apply for. That you, <laughs> the actors pay to use yeah. and you have to be a trained actor or have cer a certain amount of acting credits on to your name to be on these websites. I pay like £20 a month to get that in my inbox for the privilege of it. And also I think one of the things that I've found really 
not funny because it's not funny because it is disturbing, but it's how um, there'll be like four parts, three of them will be for men. Yep. All the male parts will be like, his name's Ted, he's a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. he's like successful blonde hair maybe, looking a bit fast benderish, and it's the other one, some of the, and then the woman is just prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like no name, no, it's just prostitute because it's basically, you know, why would I, you know, why, why, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's just a pair of boobs for the film. Yeah, That's it's literally basically her just role. sort of, it's like sentient boobs would be the most ultimate, yeah. ultimate <laughs> thing. Yeah, if they could get away it? with that then <laughs> well it's yeah it's very it's very odd because they do seem to expect a lot for no money you know but mm. but, but also like even if it was paid you, i don't think you'd want to do the the work you know it's not it's not so much that it's just that it's unpaid the no, films look no, incredibly exactly. unpleasant even if you <laughs> yeah. i mean there are jobs that are unpaid and they want you to be a prostitute it's like well i might as well just go and be a prostitute because then at least i would earn some money <laughs> why would i do this for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> but also they're terribly written, aren't they? This is the thing I could I mean, forget. Mm. I mean, not forget, but you know, step aside for a moment from like the sort of the dis- like the sort of disgustingness of you know, and the uncouthness of it all, and the sort of sleaziness. Mm. They're just really badly written. It's like English isn't their first language, but like it is. It's like it's yeah. not. It's not like they're writing in slang, or they just can't write. And it's all, and also you think if you can't write a casting call, like what's your fucking script going to be like? Why would I? Why would I want to be in anything? Or you go, man must fire gun, shoot, and you go, well, that sounds like the part I was born to play. Uh, you know, three years at Rada to, uh, you know, you've, you've, you've nailed it. You've nailed me on the head right there. Exactly what I do. You know, like, I founded my milieu. <laughs> It just feels like they've got this idea and have gone, oh my God, I've got to get this out now before someone else comes up with it. So I'm yeah. just going to write it and type it in quick and then it's there. And then someone will be in it. But it's also the other thing which he had, I used to get this a lot with, um, it's the same sort of mentality of people wanting you to work for free, which is there's a big difference between can't pay and won't pay. Yeah. And it is quite hard yeah, yeah. to work out who can't pay and who needs help. But most people like that have got mates who can do something. You know, like you used to have a scene yeah. people go like, editor needed. And you just go, how do you not know an editor? Like, every, yeah, yeah. like I could, you could, you could just walk in London and spit and you'll hit an editor. Like, <laughs> yeah. everyone can, and in fact, you should spit on editors. Yeah. <laughs> but like, how, you know, how do you not know? And also, why have you made a feature film or a short and not have anyone to edit it? Like, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> like, have it, you know, this is why it's called pre-production or, you know, thinking exactly. about it. But they'd also go, like, it's, the way they, it's the way they demand things. They don't ask or go like, hey yeah. guys, I'm doing this thing. If you're up for it, it'd be nice. You know, anyone up for it, you know. They go, for me, it would always be uh, editor needed, must have five years experience, must have done <laughs> yeah, 10 yeah. feature film credits that can be verified on IMDb. <laughs> no pay, no time wasters. <laughs> and you're like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not the <laughs> one wasting anyone's time. Like, you know, like... Because now everyone can make a film. Mm. Everyone does. Everyone's got uh, a, a camera on their phone. Yeah. So anyone... And a technic- hair ski. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And an idea for a naked woman. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, it is weird. It's like, well, I reckon that would be a great shot. Could we get a film around this? Well, we just have to have at some point then be in bed and do something. And half <laughs> the stuff is like, you don't need to be naked. Like, that's the other thing. When you read, you go, guarantee you read the script. Yeah. You wouldn't actually you go there in bed. You go, I'm pretty sure we could be under the covers. I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure you'd have the same, co- the same conversation could be at the breakfast table. Like, you know, like, yeah. I'm not saying that you should be prudish and shy away from nudity or anything like that, but there's a difference between sort of an actual thing and then just sort of salaciousness and exactly. kind of, Exactly, uh, trying to crowbar it in. Oh, it's really great. And then you just, oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> now as well, I think one of the other problems is that, you know, with the internet, uh, even one frame, one frame of nudity, and it's like it's forever, forever <laughs> in the you know you're ne- long after you're dead, like your naked picture will still be like out of there. Everyone to Google if they know you're there. So you've got to you know you've got to take these things like seriously. I think the problem with films like this is they're made by amateurs. I don't appreciate the craft. That's mm. the sort of the the tragedy because I think they're the people who would go. Well, the thing is, if my cameraman leaves, I can't make the film. But if an actor goes, I just get another actor. Yeah. <laughs> then that's the tragedy. Because they work at a level where they are just working with amateurs. And even if you're a good actor trying to make a break of it, like, you exactly. can kind of go, oh, I'll just get someone else. Yeah. Especially if all you want is someone's tits. Rather, you know, you're going <laughs> to go yeah. like, any, anyone can act, but uh, not everyone's got a great pair of tits. Exactly. It seems to be the logic of like, yeah, casting in these movies. That, it's like, well, that's you know. their priority. Yeah, it's very disheartening. <laughs> Especially you've gone through all of drama school and you go, I know what... The, this is my job. <laughs> oh, what? Hang on. Oh, 
it's yeah it's something we've done three years training and they think i just could have got some plastic surgery and saved <laughs> a lot of money because that would have been cheaper than drama school but also the problem as well is that people will always do it so they can get away with that's it. that's the problem as well because if, if i say no to getting naked for no money someone else will do it so and you know that's why people think we're expendable because yeah there's always people more shameless and awful than you. <laughs> There's always a drama school graduate to rely on. Yeah. I'm not even that angry. I'd do all right out of acting. I'm not even trained. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Who's laughing now? Yeah. Well, you know, I get to sit around in my pyjamas and yeah, drink tea and, good, you know, yeah. and can pretend that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> When you when you when you went to drama school, they said, "Where do you see yourself in ten years?" Was oh, the answer God. in my pajamas, <laughs> <laughs> eating toast, watching the right stuff. <laughs> I wish they just sat us down on the first day and gone right. Yeah, yeah. Right now, you think you're going to be in a Hollywood blockbuster the second you leave? No, here's your pajamas. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I I did the other thing when I became uh, an actor by being castable. Uh, which is not the same thing as being good or talented. They just went, you, you, you're not the same as everyone else. Uh, we could use that. We need, we need a clumsy person to drop things on the floor and go, ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. And all, and all these sort of blandly handsome men, they can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure they can. No, no, no. Uh, I'm at the stage now when I do acting that uh, I actually look forward to other actors doing well. So that it means they'll be out of, they, they'll be like, oh, they just do films now. Brilliant. Then they won't be going for TV and adverts. <laughs> so I'm always like, you know, when I see people like Nick Frost do really well, I'm like, brilliant. That means he's definitely not going to come back to adverts. <laughs> and I'm still going to be able to get adverts. <laughs> it's like a sort of weird sort of like anti Macbeth thing where I'm like, don't, don't kill them to get out of the way. I just hope they do much it's better. Good. So they just sort of just keep making movies. So there's more telly work for me. <laughs> so, you know, oh. If anything should happen to Ray Peacock, imagine <laughs> the, uh, oh. But also, I was going to say, they don't even specify like what sort of woman they want, do they? It's just, no, it's just, just naked woman. Just will you get naked. Yeah. Which is weird because they're so keen that you think they'd have a better... Because you can understand if you go, I've got this idea for a project that involves nudity, but I've got this, you know, it's like it's one scene, but I think you need it. They, have, you know, they yeah. don't even have a oh, no, character no. breakdown where they go... Because you see films, there's nudity in it, and you go, well, that's fine. Like, if you, if you was in that film and you were all right with nudity as a yeah. concept, you go, well, that's fine. Like, I would do that film. Yeah. But they don't give you any indication that that's what it's like. You don't know if you're going to say anything. No, or, exactly. <laughs> like, you just get... They, a lot of the time, it's just like, there will be nudity... That's it. There's no mention of where that might be or why or anything. I saw one actually today that was requiring, it was in a bikini, so, you know, a bit of cover up. But they went, um, the sort of a justification was like, but it'll be fine. It's just me, the male cameraman, and you in a room. And you think, that's not, that's not going to make me feel any better. I would rather there were witnesses. It's, there's just no, there's no thought. They just go, naked woman, I've had my dinner. Yeah. Bring me the naked woman. <laughs> that's, that's basically Brilliant. it. I feel like I'm sort of missing out on a whole world of opportunity by not making <laughs> shit <laughs> movies. There's me only casting people I know. That's, that's the easiest thing. I think you need, when you cast movies, you should treat it like you treat like Facebook. And do like, I'm much ruder on Twitter than I am on Facebook. Cause my, my mum and dad aren't on Twitter, but they're on Facebook. <laughs> so I think when you cast or write scripts, you should spend the whole time kind of going, imagine if my mum was with me when I was making this. <laughs> so only ever ask your friends to be in it, then you can't really be too awful to them. That's yeah. what I would say. You go, I've got this great idea for a film, and this is what well, the shot I really want is this, 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 but I can't really ask my mate, you know, to do this. So I probably won't actually film that when I get to it. But, uh, you know, that's you know, that's that's, yeah. that's a much healthier attitude. It to really have. is, yeah. You know, or then the, then the other thing is you then just end up imagining all your friends naked in your film, which is slightly awkward. It's not, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. But they don't know that's your imagination, so you know what can they do about it? <laughs> well, I'm imagining all my friends naked now, so yeah. I'm having a well time. Who doesn't? <laughs> What we have now is a regular feature. I say regular, this is the second episode, and we did it in the first one, so it's a regular feature in that respect, is uh, the hashtag game where we come up with uh, like popular hashtag games. We'll do them live as part of the show. And this week's uh, suggestion was vegetable movies. So I'll go first, and I've got um, okra, killer whale. <laughs> uh, Yambusters. 
Shallot Grave. <laughs> How to Train Your Daycon. Uh, white Chickpeas. And Blue Legume. Uh, so, uh, casting Call cool Woe, do you have uh, any vegetable movies? I do. Um, turnip and Hooch. <laughs> Sprout of Sight. <laughs> I don't know if this, is, this next one is technically a vegetable, but... The man who went up a hill but came down a plantain. <laughs> hey. uh, bok choys in the hood. <laughs> so weak. <laughs> And the corn identity. Yes. <laughs> and the corn ultimatum. <laughs> uh, Sophie, do you have any? Uh, I, have, I have so many. I, and I've included uh, herbs. Uh, I'll allow it. Because <laughs> they're on the, the official Wikipedia list of vegetables that you sent me. <laughs> so I have kill dill. <laughs> dill bill. <laughs> One and two. <laughs> the green chamomile. Yeah. Eight chamomile. <laughs> Warren chickpeas. <laughs> yeah, American history X. Yeah. <laughs> uh, watercress for elephants. <laughs> and space yam. Nice, nice, nice. You could also have had sage in Harlem, uh, an American kale, <laughs> and courgette carter. <laughs> and so concludes the hashtag game uh, so now the final part of the show is where uh, myself and the headline act we talk about their favourite scenes from films beginning middle and end scenes from films and then we act them out so what is your favourite opening to uh, any any film ever uh, my favourite is uh, from the film Rebecca Rebecca yes. yeah everyone's like oh I wasn't oh. expecting culture yeah bloody hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was brought up on this film. This is my mum's favourite film as well. Oh. So this is why it's such a... I've been watching this since I was too young to really understand what was yeah. going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was that time when I suddenly understood all the subtext and everything changed. <laughs> yeah. Everything changed. <laughs> but yeah, but Joan Fontaine's brilliant in it as well. That's she's incredible. She's got a perfect like film actress's face. As well as mm. being good at acting, she's got the perfect sort of... You know people get like photogenic. She's yeah. incredibly... Like the, she just looks great on yeah, screen. Yeah, you can't. As well. You just you can't not watch her. Which always I, I, I hate that because she's on screen. Of course, you're going to watch her. But she's just got a presence that, and yeah, yeah. for that time as well, I think she's such a good lead female yeah. character. Lawrence Livia didn't want her to be in it. Did you know? I this? didn't know that. He wanted Vivian Lee, who he was going out with at yeah, the time, yeah. to be in it, and so he was furious and was just really horrible to Joan Fontaine the entire oh. film shoot. And then because she's supposed to play someone who's timid and afraid yeah, yeah, and on exactly. the back foot. Alfred Hitchcock went, yeah, no one likes you on this film. And so she spent the whole film thinking everyone hated her because it oh, was what, because no. that helped her stay in character <laughs> thinking everyone hated her. <laughs> Which considering, like, if you know anything about her upbringing, being Olivia de Havilland's sister yeah. who also hated her and, like, yeah, pushed yeah. her out of a tree and, like, broke her collarbone and, oh, you know, yeah. it was like this poor sort of, like, it's like one, like, it's like, you know, you just feel like, oh, it's like, it's really sad. You think, like, <laughs> she literally used that character yeah. on set. Like, exactly. you know what I mean? <laughs> She's like, just having a horrible She's not time. really acting. She's, just, she's surviving the process of making a Hitchcock film. <laughs> she's, uh, Mrs. Danvers. Uh, Mrs. Danvers. Yeah, or, she's, pro- she's great, the, though, isn't she? With the she's way amazing. Of, she's the real bad guy. Because like. she's supposed to be like sort of cold and distant. Yeah. But, uh, Hitchcock said to her, try to do it without blinking. So that's why she just spends the whole time staring. When I see the, when they, they do the stuff with Mrs. Danvers, <clears throat> uh, I really identify with that because that's how I feel. Uh, when I go and have my car taken for its MOT and I have to go and talk to the mechanics with her, just, here's my car. Um, would you mind fixing my car? Yeah, I'll fix your car. Why can't you fix your car? I can't fix my car, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about I know I'm a man and I should, but I can't. I don't know. All right, all right, put your foot on the brake. Which one's the brake? I can't. I don't know. Uh, I've opened the bonnet, I've opened the petrol tank, I don't know what's happening, I've pulled the rod. Oh, I'm sorry, burn everything, burn everything. Uh, uh, but the first bit is just just a voiceover, isn't it? She's sort of recounting the story, so yes. to speak, and it's like a it's either not quite a POV, but it's like a sort of it's a, sort an of empty a, a swoop frame in, sort of yeah, from the sort of the gates of the estate all mm-hmm. the way through to the thing. So uh, we shall give you a chance to be uh, Joan Fontaine in oh, Rebecca. This is imagine finally <laughs> see this. This is what the three years of drama school it's were so for. <laughs> You send this to my drama school. Yes, yeah, see, see, I told you. <laughs> 
this is a monologue by the way like a typical actress i've chosen just <laughs> me <Yeah. laughs> oh. last night i dreamt i went to mandalay again it seemed to me i stood by the iron gate leading into the drive and for a while i could not enter for the way was barred then like all dreamers I was possessed of a sudden with supernatural powers and passed like a spirit through the barrier before me. The drive wound away in front of me, twisting and turning as it had always done. But as I advanced, I was aware that a change had come upon it. Nature had come into her own again, and little by little had encroached upon the drive with long, tenacious fingers. On and on wound the poor thread that had once been our drive, and finally, there was Mandalay. Mandalay, secretive and silent. Time could not mar the perfect symmetry of those walls. Moonlight can play odd tricks upon the fancy, and suddenly it seemed to me that light came from the windows. And then a cold came upon the moon and hovered an instant like a dark hand before a face. The illusion went with it. I looked upon a desolate shell with no whisper of the past about its staring walls. We can never go back to Mandalay again. That much is certain. <laughs> yes. So, what's your uh, what's your next? It's a miscellaneous scenes for those of you who haven't heard the podcast before, which is, as it infers, scenes from anywhere else in the film, not a beginning or an ending. So, what what scene have you chosen? I have chosen a scene from Dead Man's Shoes. Dead Man's Shoes. <laughs> yeah. The, the light, the eyes light up in the room. It's like, you know, Rebecca's awesome, but it's but not. De- it's no Dead Man's Shoes, it's no is killings. it? <laughs> What do you like about Dead Man's Shoes? What is it about? Is it just the scene or do you like the film as well? I, like, I love the whole film. It's one of those films I just, I, I think I, I bought it because it was like three pounds in, I think it was in FOB or something. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I don't know, I've heard Shane Meadow's name. I'll have a look at that. And I went home and watched it. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> and it's just, it's dark and it's gritty and Paddy Considine is amazing. And I want to be him because he's incredible. <laughs> and it's just, you feel the uh, it's so unnerving throughout the whole film and you you feel it and you just you never feel safe and it's horrible and it's grisly and it's brilliant i just saw this by accident i was in london when it was at the cinema mm. and uh, i didn't know didn't even know the film would come out and mm. it just saw his posters when shane meadows film dead man's shoes it just had that that silhouette of him with the axe yeah, you know yeah. he's doing the it's sort of the whole his arm out and it just went like does for slasher movies what like such as that? And he was like Shane Meadows slasher movie. Like I got to see a Shane Meadows. He basically thought it was a slasher movie, yeah. and I was like, I got to go and see. It. So I went and said, hadn't even seen the trailer, didn't know what it was. I was like, I'll go and give this a go. Of like, I've only ever seen like three or four films completely ignorant of even really knowing they were even a thing. Mm. And it was like a, it's a really great film to not know anything about. <laughs> yeah. and just watch it, kind of go in. What's like this is really odd. It, it really helps. It's like a small town thing, yeah. I think, because mm-hmm. at no point do you ever think, why don't they call the police? Yeah, because it's exactly. So, it's like an irrelevant concept because it's such a small thing. And also it makes it more realistic because the ga- like the criminals, the gangsters, yeah. they're real criminals. They're just sort of horrible bastards. Yeah. They're not like masterminds or geniuses. They're just pricks you well, meet in the pub who are really vile yeah. and will stab you if you look at them the wrong way. But exactly. Just, you know, uh, but yeah, don't quite really have, you know, they have flaws as well and yeah. like they're not perfect and evil you know villains they're just yeah they're just bullies blokes, basically they're, they're aren't bullies, they yeah. just horrible bullies yeah you know probably make a lot of uh you know movies and uh yeah. <laughs> like cast people to be in them uh but now it's because also it's like there's a thing which is it helps because i think there's a it's small time which is one of shane Meadows' early films mm. which is a great thing well, there's a great line in it where he, i think it's i can't remember exactly how it goes but he just basically goes it's a voiceover and he goes this isn't london this isn't even Nottingham. This is Snedden. And it's a great <laughs> yeah. thing. You kind of go, yeah, that's what it would be like if you just live in the sort of, you know, the exactly. Midlands in the middle of nowhere. It's actually great. Well, I just think it's great. Just It's great when you just know how, when you just know it's all going to end horribly badly. Mm. But you're kind of, it's one of those really weird things where you're really excited that it's going to be horrible. Yeah, you you're want You're sort of like, oh, in a, minute, in a minute he's going to go and <laughs> fucking kill everyone. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. But you know you're not just being, oh, I'm just being, you know, you know you're not being all boysy with it. You just kind of yeah, go, just, he's so good oh. that you know in a minute you're sitting there like giggling and oh, he's going to totally kill all of us. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> like, so excited for how awesome this is going to be. <laughs> and it's just, it's the bit where he just walks in and he just smashes the table and it's yeah. just like what are you looking at Rah! he just like smashes the table and they're just like you and then everyone's freaked out and he goes it's Andy's brother and everyone goes oh shit it's Andy's brother yeah. and it's like he's 
he's getting revenge on people, but you have no idea whether they really deserve any revenge. You know they're yeah. horrible, so you're like, they probably got some sort of kicking coming. But you don't know... You don't know if they actually they really deserve, deserve what he's giving <laughs> yeah. them, which is also, like, what's great about it. But, yeah. Yeah. And it's just... I think it's the low-keyness of it all, which is... Uh, well, I think that's it. And even his playing of the character is so... I mean, yeah. he has these outbursts, but he's just the... Mm. Yeah, he's very it's whole, yeah, very oh, calm a lot of the time. It is, it? and I think that's what makes it even more unnerving. And, and it's, it's also it's really funny. I think it's important with these films, yeah, yeah. but not comedy, not stupid. Funny, no, but uh, the bit with this snorting parmesan, parmesan, cheese, <laughs> yeah. and that sort of thing. And just they go to like the, the gang bus, they're just in the back room of a pub drinking stubbies, and you just go, this, this, this is the exactly. local. Exactly, it feels so good. believable. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. I sort of wholeheartedly recommend uh, mm. Dead Man's Shoes to anyone that hasn't seen it. Because if you haven't seen it, you're literally missing out. I don't know if literally is the right word, but I feel that that's the right yeah. emphasis to put on how much you should see Dead Man's Shoes. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be interesting to act out. Dead Man's Shoes. And we're doing the scene, which is, again, the fact they drive around in a 2CV and there's like 25 it's of them wonderful. in a 2CV is so funny. It's like in a little clown car. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, Gary Stretch is great as the. He's so good. Because again, like not like Paddy Considine, not trained as an actor, like yeah. you know, was a boxer and an MMA fighter. Yeah, it and, drives me mad. And then like <laughs> Paddy, Paddy Considine was a, was just a photographer in Shane Meadows, yeah. mate, wasn't he? Like he's really good. You watch, you know, Roof of Romeo Brush. You go, this guy's great Magic. at acting. We go, just like, oh yeah, I've been in your film. <laughs> you know, like, oh, fuck's sake, guys. Like, <laughs> like, Come on, you're making us all look bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is the scene where they sort of have that weird bit where they he's just he's just. So sort of basically just bouncing up and down on the street talking yeah. to his uh, his brother and he's you go, know, right, walk down there. And then they will see him when he comes and they have the confrontation sort of in the sort of weird cul de sac in residential yeah, areas. It's just it's like, like near, next great. to the garages, like, <laughs> just, like... Yeah, just imagine like dogs are gonna run past at any given <laughs> yeah. moment and kids are gonna be playing football. <laughs> um so we're gonna so who do you wanna be out of the Dead Man's shoes? Um I d I don't mind. Well it's up to you, it's um, your favourite scene, oh so I'll God, let you that's, choose. That's tough. I mean it's it's hard not to want to be Paddy Constantine. Be Paddy Constantine. I want to be Paddy Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> this is my one shot. This is your one chance, yeah. see? I'm going to have to apologise now because I'm going to attempt a vague... Because I can't do it in my own accent because it will ruin the scene <laughs> completely. I can't do a, a southern... Sort of, but I also can't do a Midlands accent. So it's just well, gonna mine's going to be awful as well. So let's just... As we always say when we do Perfect Movie... Uh, it's not like racist or offensive if it's an impression of someone. Okay. A specific person that you just get the voice wrong. Yeah. It's only if you think they all sound like that that it's racist. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's fine That's to do fine. a bad Midlands accent. Just, You're not insulting people from the Midlands. I'm just insulting Paddy Constantly, just in, my hero. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so they're there, and they stop the car, and then Sonny, who I'm playing, uh, comes over uh, to, to sort of... It's like a sort of a standoff. Yeah. Uh, Hey man, how you doing? Rich, you okay? Mm. Yeah, you know uh, the lads had this ridiculous idea that uh, yeah, it was me. Oh, it was. Thought so. What are you up to? Mooching about. Mooching about in my house. Do you always paint men like women? What are you doing, man? That's my concern. Not when you're in my house. Where are you staying? Watson's farm. Gonna go see me, are you? Maybe I will. You're not afraid of me, are you? Mm -mm. Oh, you're making me very nervous, Richard. Well, you should be. If I were you, I'd get in that fucking car and I'd get out here, man. I'd gather them goonies and get whatever you've got coming, mate. So I'm gonna fucking hit you all. I don't like being threatened, Rich. I'm not threatening you, mate. It's beyond fucking words. I watched over you when you were asleep and I looked at your fucking neck and I was that far away from slicing it. You're fucking there, mate. So get in that car and fuck off. You get to me first. I just might. See? There we go. There we go, see? You can't see this on the podcast, but people have literally shit their pants. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so another. So your next, you got another miscellaneous scene of yours another to choose, scene, which is uh, which is uh, probably my favourite film of all time, and it's Brief Encounter. I'm sorry, we're going back again. <laughs> Brief Encounter, no, Brief Encounter's great. Uh, I'm a big fan. Has everyone seen Brief Encounter? Yeah. You seen it? You seen it? You got it, haven't oh watched God, it. Go home and watch it. You Not now. It. Go afterwards, go home and watch it. There was a time when I think every week this was given away free with the Sunday papers, wasn't yeah. it? It was a DVD. It was like this, Tark of the Otter. Uh, <laughs> sort of, uh, uh, briefing, what is it about Briefing Counter that you like? It is, 
it is just the most beautiful love story. Um, and um, Celia Johnson, who um, is the lead uh, female in it, is just incredible. And it is, it is just the most stunning film and you just want them to get together and it's based around a couple who meet, or two people who meet at a train station and have a love affair. And even though they're cheating on their partners, you want them together because it's perfect and you love them so much. And it is, it's just stunning. And it's so understated, but at times it's so overly romantic. Oh, I love it so much. Well, it's a, very weird, it's a very weird film because it's about two people not having an affair, but having an but affair. Having affair yeah. But also like... It's but like they don't have horrible home lives, so you don't have that no. thing. It's just basically just to happen to meet up and go. Oh, yeah, we, we get on. It's really nice, and every Thursday we'll meet up because that's when our yeah. journeys collide. Exactly. And then they're like, we should, but it's like the fact that even them having coffee together is like we have to make sure no one sees us, and it's just yeah. really weird watching a film set then. That's it. it. Like, there's like there's an incredible scene where they they go f- <laughs> they're at a restaurant and then someone she knows sees them and then they have to pretend that they're sort of related. Yeah, and it's like. Oh, or they're friends. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah. But it's like, oh, it's it's horrible. But they're they're so innocent in it as well. Or it yeah. just sort of happens. It's just. Oh. It was rated A as if like for adults only. It's like it was like you know it was like a, it was banned yeah, in yeah. Ireland for a year because it showed adulterers in a positive light. It's weird because you're sort of supporting their infidelity. You completely are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's really weird. But that's it's because if they weren't. If they weren't both married, it would just be two people meet up, fall in love, that's it really. Yeah. And it, but because they can't. You know, exactly. It's, and it's also now, they would just go, oh, let's run away together. But because it's them, they have they to go, we it. can't, we can't, oh, no, we can't, we mustn't. We can't, we, no, we mustn't. You know, oh, no, no, we mustn't. You know. And it's great. And it's, you know, it's, it, again, it's quite funny. And uh, yeah. there's lots of really interesting other characters. The really, one of the really interesting scenes I like is the bit where he, they go to the flat, which is his friend's yeah, flat. Yeah. And his friend, because you imagine it's like, if this was now, his friend would be like, you fucking, do- yeah, come on, son. <laughs> yeah. I'll go out again. But he's just like, in this, he's like, what's going on? He's, li- he's like furious, isn't he? Yeah. There's a great bit where he goes, you're really angry. I'm not angry. I'm just really disappointed. <laughs> Nothing's happened. He just had a girl alone in, in his flat exactly. and he's gone out. But that's the horror. And he's like, he's like, I don't think we can be friends anymore. I want my, I want my spare key back. <laughs> yes, and it's like, yes. f- like what? Like, <laughs> you know, it's another one of those great films that you can't remake now because of social media. You know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah. It's, and it's one of those films as well. Like I've, I've made, I make so many people watch it and then some people watching this go, what? This is ridiculous. I'm like, think of the time when it was yeah. coming out. Think of it. It's beautiful. Like, it's really boring. It's fall in love. And they keep meeting on a Thursday. And that's it. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, have you seen, they, in the 70s, they did a TV movie version of it with uh, Richard Burton and Sophia Loren? No. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, if you can imagine uh, them acting, you know, like both oh, of them using the God. same accents and just kind of the, this weird... The problem weird... is they're, they're both too sexy. Yeah, like, yeah. The thing with... Um, Celia Johnson and Terence Howard is they're, they're, are they sort of not plain looking, but they're just normal. They're, they're believable. Yeah. They're sort of as middle class sort of people. Yeah. And he's a sort of doctor who just he's just a G. He's not a fancy doctor. He's not no, like George just, Clooney in ER doctor. Yeah, he's, yeah. You know, he's not even you know Anthony Edwards in ER. He's just you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's sort of BBC more, doctor. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> he's definitely on casualty doctor. <laughs> yeah. And she's like a housewife, but she she she's very interesting. Celia Johnson, isn't she? Because she didn't make a lot of movies, really. Because she was one of those mm. theatre actors who didn't like make didn't like making films. No, because you forget that around that time as well, some people just a still thought film was beneath them, mm. and like you know they sort of would just do theatre because they're, they're actors. We yeah. don't do. It's one of the reasons Alec Guinness was so popular was he embraced cinema when a lot of mm. other actors were kind of very snobbish about film. So she, she was basically had to be persuaded to be in it yeah, because yeah. like everyone's like she's the best person. She's like I don't like making films. And then I think Noel Coward read of the script. She went, oh, I definitely should do this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're right. I should definitely be in this. And he was right. And it's Trevor Howard's essentially his first proper film. He'd done like a couple of bits, oh, wow, but this yeah. was his first film. Uh, so everything we know about Trevor Howard, this is like his first. I love Trevor Howard. I think he's great. He looks great in it as well because he's so sort of so sort of normal. Hello, he's sort of you know. Yeah, Hello, how are you? Exactly. You know. <laughs> he's just he's just your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do you don't think do you do anything exceptional? I do nothing exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Neither neither do I. That's weird. <laughs> Match made in heaven. <laughs> uh, but I also like that. What I really like about it is the scene. I like all the scenes when they have to, um, like they they do that thing where they're like because everything's about being in secret. So they're not mm. even allowed. They don't even know sort of really know themselves if they're in love or not, or if they're supposed to say. Like, so yeah, the really yeah. bits they have to go like you know. I just wanted to check one thing. Is it real? Yeah. Is it real for you? Like it is for me. Yeah. 
do you go to bed at night sort of dr- dreading meeting me because you know it's real and you know this is, this is a crazy thing and it will never work? And, and like, yes, I love you. I love you. T- I love you. I love you too. And it's just like this great, like in the yeah. boathouse, where they're just like, yeah, but yeah. we can't. We can't. <laughs> like, let's run away. We can't. What would they, you know, it's just this great, but it's like really good event. Oh, brilliant. Mm. And really funny. And it's got um, uh, Stanley Holloway in it, which is always a good thing for yeah. films yeah. to have, playing Stanley Holloway as he's no, you know. <laughs> I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky oh, yeah. and uh, essentially <laughs> sexually molest the woman who works in the cafe yep. in a playful way. But it's all right. <laughs> it's the 40s. It's all right to sort of it's go. A cheeky grin. Yeah, we, you know, that's how we flirt. She bends <laughs> over, <laughs> I fondle her ass. But that's just cheeky and working class, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, so I think the scene we're going to do is the sort of the first scene. Uh, that where they where it's they not the first time we've seen them it's because the, you, know, you, you see them then there's like flashbacks and voiceovers and this mm. is the scene where we see the first time that they actually yeah. meet isn't it and it's um it's the first time they sort of actually interact with each other yes and uh, to set the scene she's gone out to the platform and a train's gone past and something's blown in her eye and she's got a terrible problem with yes. her eye and her eyes oh my eye hurts yeah, right. and so she goes into the cafe I think only in EastEnders do they drink more tea yeah. <laughs> in this film. Basically, every, every time they go to the cafe, it's a cup of tea, please. And then someone says, Is there any chance of brandy? It's after hours, dar- darling. <laughs> yeah. And they go, But surely for shock and nerves, you could give us some brandy. Like, oh, all right, that'll be seven pence. And you go, I have no idea if that's a lot of money or not. Uh, <laughs> it's great. <Yeah. laughs> I've got to say, also, Brief Encounter will make you hate train stations now even more because you watch it now going, oh, my God, I'd be hanging around the train station all the time. I have tea, brandy and a bun like that, yeah. before you get on your train every time. Yeah. And that's, that's a, some, someone who comes in and selling all his job is to come in and check the trains on time. Yeah. Imagine if they give it I that know, much of a shit. I actually care. <laughs> nowadays, he would just, nowadays, Stanley Holloway's character would be checking the Wi-Fi works. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the person going, we're really sorry, it's 10 minutes late, and uh, there's no disabled access. So, yeah. uh, sorry, guys. But there's, there is a hen do on this train, though, going to all the way to Newcastle. Uh, sorry, you just got rid of the stag do, but now it's a hen do, so you might as well just, just hang yourself. <laughs> Although, I'll be honest, as far as like standing someone up goes, I think moving to Africa with your family is quite a sort of, uh, really you know, how am I going to get out of this? Should I not call her uh, back? Shall I move to Africa? And back then, <laughs> Africa, like, yeah. you are so, never yeah. seeing me again. Yeah. I'm never coming back from, well, South Africa, so he's probably going to be all right because he was you know, a, a he white, was do- white middle white. class doctor. He's probably fine. <laughs> I'm sure he had a whale of a time. Uh, uh, well, no, yeah. Now I'm wondering what happens to him in the future. Yeah, it would be great if there was a sequel, <laughs> but it's just, you know, <laughs> brief encounter two. Uh, encounter harder. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is the bit where they they meet. So mm. I have to attempt to do my best, uh, my best sort of nice. Uh, pretend I'm in America and I'm trying to impress people in a bar English accent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, brief encounter. Please let me look. I happen to be a doctor. It's very kind of you. Turn around to the light, please. Now look up. Now look down. Keep still. I see it. There. Oh, what a relief! It was agonising. Looks like a bit of grit. It was when the express went through. Oh, thank you very much indeed. How lucky for me you happen to be here. Anybody could have done. Well, never mind. You did, and I'm most grateful. Oh, that's my train. I must run. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so we come on to your final scene, which technically yes. isn't actually the it's final, not the final, final scene. scene. I can't bring myself to, to do the very end because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your final scene is where slightly. you think the film should have finished. Yes, technically, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, it it's stand by me. Stand by me. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, it's very and, weepy. I didn't realise how <laughs> most of it's going to be. I know I've chosen sort of no. Like, no, it's, it's fine. It's, big comedies it's or actions. Fine. Um, it's fine. Yeah, the, the finals. Yeah. The very final bit of Stand By Me is absolute cack. Um, but where it should have ended, in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stand um, By Me is great. Have you seen Stand By Me? Stand By Me, yes. I'm rushing my paper. That's very unprofessional. Uh, yeah, Stand By Me. I really, you know, Stand By Me is one of these I really like. And every time you think about it, you go, oh, there's that bit, and that bit, and that yeah. bit, and that bit. It's brilliant. And there's a cameo from John Cusack in a flashback, yeah. which is always why. Which is, you know, it's always exactly. great. Exactly. 
Uh, Keith Keith Sutherland's Sutherland, great yeah. as well. Keith <laughs> yeah. Sutherland. You go, oh, yeah, because you know, there's people out there who probably don't know Keith Sutherland did anything before 24. Mm. And that's not just a bit like because, you know, if you're of a certain age, you'll only yeah. really have seen him in 24 and not all these great 80s movies. Uh, but he's great in this. Just, just yeah. really horrible, isn't he's he? He's really nasty. And uh, apparently, that um, in order to sort of stay in character, he would deliberately be mean to the kid actors oh, when no. he was like on <laughs> set. So he would just basically push them around and just be horrible to them. <gasps> not like really horrible, just yeah, kind of stay in character was nice never. Was never nice to them, and then like was just sort of mean <laughs> and horrible like that, which I thought was That's uh, amazing. Can I was actually say, um, I have a sl- small anecdote about Stand by Me. It's actually my first acting job um, because at primary school, me and my friends put on a play of Stand by Me. At the age of ten, we were all girls. <laughs> And made our class watch our full adaptation of Stand By Me. (laughs) Which our teacher regularly stopped and went, I haven't seen the film. Is it going on much longer? Yes. Two and a half hours in we slept. They still don't even know if there's a body to go and look at or not. (laughs) How did you do the pie eating scene? Uh, we mimed, we mimed everything. You just mimed vomiting all over the place. Yeah, we did the, the train scene. Um, (laughs) we got a couple of people who weren't characters to chase. Oh, I played Gordy and, um, Will Wheaton. And, um, we got a couple. An odd choice. (laughs) I can do a film. We'll just choose, uh, I'll choose to be Will Wheaton. I don't even think Will Wheaton's chosen that, that option. <laughs> and yeah, I was chased around the classroom, pretending it was I was being chased down by a train. Um, so yeah, I uh, apparently uh, when they did the train scene, they didn't look scared enough. So Rob Reiner uh, like screamed at them till they were traumatized, <laughs> so they looked horrified on screen. It basically just seemed like a really traumatic experience because basically all the, all the things you read about it is. Like when River Phoenix does that thing where he cries around the camp for mm. that scene, apparently he wasn't doing that enough. So Rob Reiner was like, think of a time you've really been let down by a grown-up. And then he was like, started crying. He was like, yeah, we'll film that bit. Wow. So it was basically just lots of people crying the whole time. No wonder none of the four have really... <laughs> Never quite got over it. But I always think the problem with Stephen King, uh, not the problem, but the thing I think about Stephen King is that all his best stuff is his stuff that isn't horror. Mm. Uh, like he's known as the horror writer, yeah, but all his yeah. horror stuff... It's not rubbish, but all the best films of his horror books are completely different from the books. Because <laughs> yeah. they went, well, this is a good idea, but uh, what is it? So something their dads did means they are, oh, again, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, what happened to Stephen King's, like, what did Stephen King's dad do that he has to keep reliving the same <laughs> plot? Uh, apparently as well, uh, Adrian Lynn was going to direct Stand By Me originally, but uh, nine and a half weeks overran, so he couldn't do it. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the person you want doing Stand By Me, is uh, the director of nine and a half weeks. <laughs> so this isn't, this isn't the end scene, which is Richard Dreyfuss uh, typing and then oh, still going on and on and on, and then oh, these kids so come tedious. in and go, why don't you come and have some fun with us? And he's like, because I'm writing this story about my friends are all dead now. Yeah. <laughs> And it's on a shitty old computer, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, it's horrible." Yeah, oh, it's so boring. But uh, but you the rest of Stand by Me is brilliant. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's incredible. So this is just the bit where they've all gone off, and it's the two of them, Chris and jo- Gordy. Really? Sorry, not Geordie. That's uh, <laughs> we're getting the Will Wheaton Star Trek thing uh, carried on. <laughs> Uh, Chris and Gordy, mm. which is River Phoenix and Will Wheaton, they're just looking over at the the town. They've yeah, everyone left. Everyone. So, who are you going to be? You're going to be. I, I might be. I might stick with Gordy. You're going to be with Gordy. Okay. You're going to be. Go Will, back to my childhood. Keep the Will Wheaton. <laughs> so, stand by me. Uh, I'll be Chris. Uh, you can be Gordy. Yeah. And we shall do the last bit, which they're standing over there and they talk to each other, and it's a really moving, a really moving scene where uh, River Phoenix, played by me, if you've seen the resemblance between me and. Uh, so River Phoenix. It is, isn't it? It is. I'm just going to get into character because he's very emotional. I'm never going to get out of this town, am I, Gordy? You can do anything you want, man. Yeah, sure. Give me some skin. I'll see you. Not if I see you first. See you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Casting Call Woe. Yes. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you have enjoyed this, then please like my Facebook page and get updates about live shows, podcast recordings, and more. You can follow me on Twitter at squat underscore Betty. You can check out my YouTube videos at user ID Buckham39, and you can check out my website, www.thatawesomemovieguide.com. A special thanks to the Geekatorium at geekatorium.net for all their help in recording and hosting this podcast. I've been Richard Sandling. This was Richard Sandling's perfect movie. Good night! <laughs>